Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. This video is, I guess, a continuation of money and spiritualism. Um, I've had some really interesting conversations with people around money and the flow of money and the energy of money and um, I think it's a really powerful conversation to have um, with you guys and I've received a lot of very positive feedback from you wanting more um, information around this sort of way of looking at money. Recently I watched a video, um, uh, it was a very short video and it was um, with Oprah who I'm a huge fan of and is, I think has just been such a huge pioneer of talking about um, well-being from a spiritual perspective. And it was her you know, sort of top tips for getting ahead spiritually. And in watching that video, it made me sort of think about, well, what are, what are my rules for getting ahead um, spiritually from a financial perspective? And so I put together my top five sort of rules or principles or values that I personally live by um, in my sort of um, financial um, journey, which I thought would be interesting and you might like to hear. So here are my number top, well, my five top tips um, for getting ahead financially from a spiritual perspective. Number one. Focus on your dream. Um, do I always say my mantra is, you know, march the beat of your own drum. I'm not a very competitive person. Um, the only person I want to compete against is myself. Um, you know, each day I work on, you know, growing as a person, um, intellectually, um, spiritually, um, you know, physically and becoming fitter and healthier and obviously, you know, growing my financial independence and freedom. Um, so my advice to you is, you know, not don't just come up with a with a financial goal. You know, think about it. You know, sit with it. Um, make sure it triggers something that's a, a passion or um, an excitement within you, so that you feel uplifted and and inspired to take action. You know, and by doing that, it will make achieving the goal a lot more enjoyable and um, you make you a lot more powerful in in working towards that goal. You know, though the financial goal that you set for yourself is incredibly personal and it should be free of any sort of judgment, but it also should be really aligned to your, you know, values um, on life. So don't get caught up in, um, you know, what other people are doing. You know, if your friend's saving for their first apartment or house, that's fine. That's their goal. Don't worry about that. Think about what you want to do, what makes you feel good, what makes you feel alive and inspired and invigorated and work and make sure you put the, the right actions in place to achieve those goals. Okay, so just focus purely on yourself. Number two, watch, watch your language. So often when I'm having a, a Skype consultation through um, my sugar mama um, business, or even when I'm sort of chatting with my SaaS financial clients, I can tell a lot about people's relationship with money just by listening and to the, the, the way they talk about money and the language they use. Um, it's really important that if you are um, working towards um, you know, a financial goal or on a financial um, path towards financial independence, you've got to use a positive um, language set that triggers and um, encourages um, positive actions. You know, if I listen to someone sit and mope and be depressed about, you know, taking forever to save, um, you know, for a, de a deposit on a home or it takes forever to build up a share portfolio, um, they are only going to get more negative outcomes and experiences from that conversation. If you can learn to switch your language, not only will it trigger, uh, you know, a switch in your, in your mindset and your attitude and therefore your actions, but you'll be so much more um, uh, involved and connected to what you're doing. And um, for example, you know, if if you're thinking, you know, it's taking forever to save for a home, or it's taking forever to get out of credit card debt, start to say, make sure you put some positive mantras in place, and say, I'm feeling great about, um, you know. T uh, paying extra money onto my credit card debt, I can see it going down. I can st I can feel I'm starting to feel more control in my in my um, financial affairs and, and getting on top of um, you know getting on track of building my wealth rather than just paying down debt. By choosing to use positive um, uh, uplifting language uh, words in your language in the way that you explain your goals not just to other people but to yourself will be help you dramatically in in achieving goals not only. Um, uh, faster but more effectively um, you know I'm not saying sweep um, your feelings under the mat about how you're feeling about your financial situation it's perfectly normal to have those feelings of frustration but accept it and then try and turn it into a positive number three enjoy the journey 
in my financial planning practice, SAS Financial, um, when I'm designing financial strategies for clients, um, you know, I don't believe in a in a get rich quick scheme. It's they're often too good to be true, and they come with a lot of um, pain and remorse and regret. You know, it's uh, when I'm designing a strategy, it's obviously from getting person at point point A to point B, and Everybody is different in the in the, the journey they want to take. I have some clients who are quite relaxed, and you know, obviously, having financial independence and freedom is important to them. But they don't want to take an aggressive or um, a strict, uh, you know, p path in getting from A to B. They want to sort of take more of the scenic route and and have a really good balance on life. And there's no right and wrong between that. Whereas some other clients, particularly my younger clients. You know, they're really excited and motivated towards building financial wealth independence. So they want to go the fastest way possible, even if it means on that journey, you know, on that sort of, I guess, financial map. They're happy to pay a few tolls along the way to get there faster. And, um, and they, you know, may need to have more, I guess, pit stops to refuel um, on that sort of financial journey or pathway towards financial freedom. There's no wrong or right, but the point I'm trying to make is, Enjoy that journey. I mean, building financial, um, working towards building financial wealth and freedom is an incredibly empowering, exciting experience. Um, it's not supposed to be something that's um, strict and mean and, and um, depressing. It's an adventure and it's something you should feel really proud about yourself in doing. And, you know, it's an incredibly responsible um, uh, decision that you make for yourself in working towards becoming financially free. And, and you know, obviously there are a lot of benefits to being financially free. So what I'm saying is enjoy the process. There are going to be parts where you feel it's exhausting or tiring or you're, you know, a bit feeling sad sometimes because you might have to go without maybe one or two things. But at the end of the day, you're working towards a really powerful um, goal for yourself and you're actually working to a much better future with a lot less stress in your, in your life financially. Number four, focus on integrity. When you focus on doing something in the most honest and connected and um, honorable way, um, you shield yourself from, from negative impacts. Um, there have been so many times in my life where I've you know, mentioned to someone that I'm working towards doing something and they've sort of laughed at me and thought, oh, yeah, right. Or they've said to me blatantly, can I, how are you going to possibly afford to do that or how are you going to find time to do that you possibly couldn't do that you wouldn't know how to do it but if you just choose to choose to listen to what they're saying but then think no this is something I'm really passionate about this is something I'm you know I'm I think it's going to help make you know other people's lives better um, help you know improve my own situation and, and, and for myself and for my family um, you know really connecting with that integrity um, that will help you protect you from people who try and pull you down or hold you back from going to where, where you want to go um, I know even just in setting up this channel, so many people, were, when I told them about it, that this is what I was going to do, sort of, you know, rolled their eyes and thought, oh yeah, here we go, you know, a, an idea that Canon's got as if it will ever get off the ground. And while, you know, some of them were right, you know, I am, you know, quite time poor, I'm very busy, I'm, you know, a single mum. Um, I, I was really connected to making sure that I, you know, could educate and inspire people like yourselves, you know, to go ahead and, and, and achieve your financial goals and show you how just a few little things in your life can make such a powerful difference and make your life so much more, um, I guess, stress stress free or, or reduce the amount of stress so that you can focus on more things um, in life that make you feel happy about. So, you know, really try and connect with, you know, living a life of, you know, of authenticity and honesty and, um, and that will help protect you from people like that that try and, you know, as I said, pull you down or hold you back in life. My fifth and final tip for getting ahead um, financially from a spiritual perspective is to sit with the pain. You know, as humans, we all try as much as we can to avoid um, that feeling of, of pain uh, because obviously it hurts. Um, but it is very powerful to just learn to sit and acknowledge the pain you're feeling um, because obviously it will pass. Not everything stays. Um, uh, my spiritual advisor always says, you know, it's like clouds. You know, they're there, but they do keep moving and, and they, you know, obviously eventually move away. And I, a classic example for me is when I was saving to buy my first property. I saved for six years and every weekend I would look at properties, inspect properties and I would come away at the end of a Saturday afternoon feeling so disheartened, flat and exhausted. And, it, you know, it. I just remember just thinking, oh, do I give up or do I, um, you know, just 
do something different, you know, is this really what I want to do? But I learned to sit with that frustration. I persevered. I kept on saving. I worked really hard. Um, yes, I did have to go for, without a few things. Just um, I had to go without a few things, but it was all worth it because when I finally bought that first property, I felt so fantastic. I was so proud of myself. Um, it gave me a great feeling of self-worth and, um, and I felt really independent. And um, so what I'm saying is, you know, sit with the pain. It's okay. It does pass. It's all part of the journey. And as long as you're focusing on, you know, your dream and your goal, that's the most important thing. Hang in there, persevere. And you're, you know, remember you're making a better life for yourself and for your family and loved ones. I hope this video has helped. Um, don't forget, you can also follow me on Instagram. Make sure you subscribe and we're also on Facebook. As always, I love hearing you know any requests that you might have or any videos. Um, you guys have sent me some fantastic ideas for videos, which I will be working on and doing shortly. But in the meantime, I hope this helps and helps keep you feeling inspired and connected to your goals and I guess maybe even reinvigorated. So have a great day and I'll see you in my next video soon. Ciao for now. Bye.